close to the speed of light is a kind of elixir of life. Because time slows down close to the speed of light, special relativity provides us with a means of going to the stars. Welcome back, everybody, to Llamascapes. It is day 62, and we have been working hard on our dungeoneering goal. We are 50k XP away from 93, and I just got to the end of a prestige, okay? And 93 will unlock another floor. As it turns out, you get one every odd level. So, yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and spend 50k tokens, get that level, run that floor, bump up my prestige, so that the XP goes by just a little bit faster. So we're doing 50k, and we're picking up the level. I actually don't know what I'm going to be doing with the rest of my tokens. You know, the other 260,000 that I'm up to, and the other, you know, 200,000 or so that I'm going to get on this grind. I might just throw them all into XP to get this grind done a little bit faster. I'm not sure yet. So I've been doing a good job of keeping up with uh, getting Vizwax daily up to 1260, which is a decent stack, and I'm finally comfortable to start spending it on something other than just fast teleports. I'm going to start extending challenges like smithing, like crafting, uh, maybe even construction, really just the slow things, um, you know, hunter and, and uh, thieving, take it or leave it, uh, but these slow things like smithing for sure. Um, I might even do some re-rolling, but I'm, I'm not sold on that just yet. Okay, I did read a pretty fair point. It's that pickpocketing, or sorry, thieving, gets up to like 800,000 to a million an hour if you're really going at it. So yeah, yeah, reroll these because they're not worth it. Uh, hey, summoning? Absolutely. Ah, there we finally have it, the soul talisman. Man, it has been, it has been quite a lot of shifting tombs, I gotta say. Uh, <laughs> I'm kind of happy to be out of here, but also kind of sad I didn't get the Kofesh along the way, right? Because I'm sure I'll come back at some point for it. And something that is quite important about this Soul Talisman is that adding it to the Wicked Hood will give me the last Talisman that I need. It, it says Astral for some reason, uh, but that should mean that I get, uh, I get Pure Essence out of this now. Let me just double check. Okay, it looks like I'll need to get an elemental talisman, so let me go do that. Let me uh, throw these Fremnik equipment patches on my rock shell, and that will upgrade these to T65, I believe? Yeah. So that is a pretty decent set of armor. And the helmet. And uh, there we have our final melee set for the Road to Max Cave series. Oh, and because I don't have any other augmentable uh, legs for or really just augmentable melee armor. I've decided I do want to be siphoning this for the time being, so I am going to siphon this level 12 and finally get some more invention XP. It has been a while since I've got a level in that skill. Oh, I thought before, you know, before I go to the Abyss and start farming, I should actually come and talk to uh, Wizard Elris here in the Runecrafting Guild. Turns out I can go ahead and get the Omni Talisman, so let me feed that into my Wicked Hood. And let's see. Okay. That slot is still missing, so I do need to go and get an Elemental Talisman. But after I get it, I will be able to withdraw Pure Essence from this. That's a really important unlock, uh, or really useful. I don't know how important it is, but I think it's pretty useful at least. Well, getting that Talisman took almost no time at all, and we got the uh, large pouch as well. Uh, <laughs> you end up using it for a quest, and they don't give it back to you, so eventually I had to go back and get it anyway. Uh, let's throw that in there. And we finally have it fully upgraded. So now, if I go and buy other pieces of the Wicked Outfit, I actually get more Essence per day. You get more Rune Withdraws as well. Um, but a nice thing about getting free Essence per day is that you can do something like take a run through the Abyss, hop out to an altar, and then just quickly withdraw from your uh, Wicked Hood. And you still get the uh, the bonus with, from the Demonic Skull by running through the Abyss. Um, so that's something that I can do kind of as a daily uh, for blood runes. I think I'm going to start doing it. Um, it really just depends on how much XP it gives, and I guess I should go make up some rune crafting urns if I am going to be doing that. And today's traveling merchant is somewhat uh, convenient given that it's got an unstable air rune. Uh, so another 5,000 rune span points purchased, and if I head here uh, and talk to Wizard Phoenix, I can pick up the Wicked Cape. 
Uh, and the next one that I purchase uh, will actually let me get the Wicked Robe Bottom as well. Um, so you'll notice that having the Wicked Cape, you don't have to have it equipped or anything. Uh, just having it increases this to 125 and 3. It is nice that you get essentially an extra inventory full of essence for free every day. One nice thing I can do with these Dungeoneering tokens, other than just buying XP, uh, is of course purchasing the Chaotic Gatestone for 25,000 Dungeoneering tokens. Um, now, I don't plan to be using this just yet, but if I go ahead and combine this, there's the Abyssal Gatestone, and if we take this to the Monolith, yeah, Nexus mod, when entering the Abyss, you arrive at the center. That's not that important, given that I'm not going to be doing Abyss runecrafting just yet. But I think it's time that I can turn off Font of Life and I can change over to Pouch Protector if I am going to be doing this sort of thing daily. Go ahead and harness this power instead of Font of Life. Boom. Boom. Uh, and now, if I go, it's not going to have any of my pouches degrade. This is especially important when you get to 90. You have the massive pouch that you purchase for rune span points. Um, that meaning it never degrading is just super nice. And there we have one more Dungeoneering level up to 94. It is now my highest skill by about 55,000 EXP over magic. That is just kind of insane. Um, so about 800k away, and I have. 300,000 tokens, so really only about 500k away. Um, probably gonna knock that out today. I think that is legitimately the first time I've ever seen more than 100,000 XP for a floor on an Iron Man. That is, uh, that's a nice feeling. Oh, and the actual XP drop is like 111,000 because of the, uh, because of the outfit. That's, <laughs> that's nuts. You know, I am probably going to regret this later, but let's just do it. Let's bite the bullet. 341k. Boom. There is level 95. Dungeoneering. Done with this place for now. Might come back and train it at some point later, but I expect my melee training in Elite Dungeons will carry a lot of this XP. And the occasional daily challenges will help out a lot too. But the XP rate is really solid, so uh, it's not like I'd be complaining if I had to come back to 99 it. And here we have it in the Melior district entering here. There is the Garajo resource dungeon. And look, Divine Magic Tree. That one's actually uh, just fine for my use. Um, Divine Magics give a little less uh, XP per day, but they're a little bit faster to do your, uh, your full limit, and they will help out my fletching. So it's kind of a mixed bag. Ideally, I would do use, but if I see magics, I'm just going to chop magics. Um, but yeah, you basically come in here, uh, Divine Locations will spawn randomly. You can hop worlds looking, finding what you're uh, looking for. Deposit box right here. Uh, oh, and this little fella right here will give you a card every day, which can benefit you on a Dungeoneering floor. So specifically, if you find like a, I think it's a Bunyip card or a few other ones, um, they can give you like more tokens, more XP for one floor. Worth using on a large for sure. So for reference, uh, with the wise perk and the extended divine limit each day, chopping magics would give about 67,000 XP. I think yous are in the like 80 to 90,000 range, um, but with all my bonuses, 67k a day is quite impactful. You know, if I do that for like 50 days, that is already 3.3 million XP. Um, yeah, and the XP just flows in really fast compared to normal woodcutting. And with that Dungeoneering goal out of the way, it is time to work on my next big goals, which primarily is getting the Mauritania Elite Diaries done. So I am within range for farming. I need 87 summoning, which is quite tough. 94 herbal orb, but boostable, so I'm on mark. And the last thing is 96 fishing, but boostable. So I'm just going for 90 or 91, probably 91. Uh, so yeah, time to knock out about 2.4 mil fishing. I'm just going to do that over the course of the next few days, though. Um, but given that my next goal after that is doing some BGH and then doing archaeology, yeah, I mean, everything's AFK for me now. Oh, and I just realized that I want to get smithing to 85 before the end of the month, which happens to be in like three days. So uh, yeah, I'll be doing some mining and smithing pretty soon. Well, um, okay, there's, uh, there, <laughs> there's bubbles at just shy of 3.6 million. I, um, ah, you know, I was really wondering how many, 
skilling pets I would get on the way to maxing. And at this rate, I'm, I might just get them all. So, <laughs> so let's unlock that and let's set that as the new override. <laughs> on to day 63, where I'm revisiting Ubisk or whatever it's called for these XP lamps from the Mighty Fall. I never used them. So now is probably a good time to, and I need some summoning XP. So I'm going to throw them both into summoning. Oh, right. This one's like uh, 79 plus or something. I'll, I'll hold this one. Uh, or, well, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll come back and get it later. With this uh, level up, we have 77 summoning that unlocks Talon Beasts. And I also just got my fifth piece of the Shaman outfit. So I have the full XP bonus available, but I do need one more week of familiarization to get the add-on for the uh, headdress here. Okay, here's the lamp, finally. I did some summoning training, and there we go, now I can use it. So we are about 2.1 million summoning away from our goal, uh, which means we do need to farm a fair number of charms to get there. Uh, I did a little bit of mining of Addy Ore, uh, and a little bit of Runite. Uh, I do need to pick up some Luminite, uh, to actually turn the, the Addy into bars to make Addy Minotaurs. Uh, and I've also been mining some Bane to get my smithing goal. Uh, as it turns out, I actually do have the Effigy Incubator D&D &D unlocked at 85 crafting. Um, the thing is, I want to put the XP into smithing, so I'm just going to train my smithing. Uh, and I think I have enough Bane ore now to get 85. Well, we're back at BM. That was a super scuffed kill, but let's see what we get. <laughs> <laughs> are you, are you joking, man? Are you kidding me? What the hell? <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. Codex number three. Totally, totally deserved, by the way. Yeah. Basically no rerolls. 15 KC. Ha. <sighs> On to day 64, and there we have it, 85 smithing picked up, which is nice. Also, uh, yeah, I have a full other burial set to just burn through. So it's about 100,000 smithing just sitting in my inventory, um, plus some some bonus XP. I uh, got my fourth piece of the blacksmith outfit, which is the helmet, uh, just the chest piece to go for 2% bonus XP, and then you get the add-on as well. Um, yeah, don't plan to finish off my mining and smithing goals just yet. Uh, going to go back to fishing as soon as uh, as soon as I've burned through uh, this burial set here. There we have level ninety one divination, which it's it's not a milestone of in any sense, but it does mean that I can do uh, uh, boost up to level ninety five with just a plus four from stews, which is a lot more common. Um, so I think I am going to stew boost so that I can turn my energies into uh, incandescent. I do have a stack of about 5,400 cursed energy here, and my charge pack is is really low. <laughs> it's 5,600 is not suitable. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna go do that little boost and make some incandescence into uh, divine charges, and that is a nice feeling right there. 36 divine charges to weave, and there's my first tears of Guthics with the quest cape equipped. Got quite close to breaking 300. I was at 298 tiers, which is pretty solid. Uh, and I get another Tears of Guthix tomorrow. Ran my weekly penguins and then reset it and ran it again. And I have some caskets that I thought now would be a fun time to open. So let's start with the easies. Six easies. Wow, that is incredible. Okay, cool. Uh, elegant skirt. I'll take it. Nothing. Nothing, but that is decent value for one of these. A Bob shirt, okay. Uh, 39k, sure, I'll reroll it. Those lighthouse teleports are worth a ton, wow. Uh, and then this is garbage, reroll into garbage, okay. Let's hope for the mediums to be decent. No. And no. Uh, though meerkat patches may be decent. And an elite for a master clue, okay. Uh, that's, that's something, right? Got a few more things that I could research, given that I got up to 69 invention through fishing, and with this, uh, that's a little bit of a milestone. That is 70 invention, which is 70 in all skills. 
Okay, yeah, this D&D is fantastic. I realized I had a few more invention materials banked up than I did initially, so I uh, just got a honed three to add to my fishing rod omatics to make this grind just a little bit faster. Also, I finally have a full shark outfit that I can equip, which is a 5% XP boost, essentially, because it's a 5% boost to catching fish. Now, how many pieces did this take? Uh, yeah, I got 1, 2, 3, 4, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So I got 13 of the pieces before I completed one set. It's literally the most you can possibly get <laughs> before you complete a set. Uh... Yeah, so only two parts left till I get the full Fury Shark outfit, at least. Made myself an invention potion so I could boost up and finally build this alchemizer. Uh, now we're going to dump our fire runes, nature runes, and a whole bunch of stuff from Elite Dungeons in here. Yeah, that's, that's going to be processing for a while. Um, apparently, like, a whole week. But, yeah, it's going to be a lot of money once it's done. Just did some fun math, and while I do have about 430,000 fishing left to go for my goal of just 90, ideally I'd get 91, but I think I can get the plus 6 boost I need for the Mori Diaries, so I'll go for a plus 6 there, plus 6 Herblore, and I basically have the Diaries done. But uh, anyway, uh, despite having quite a bit of fishing left to go, right, um, just these uncooked fish, the soles, the catfish, the beltfish, um, if I didn't burn any... I have nearly 7 million cooking banked. That is just nuts right there. And then I have, you know, these swordfish, the sharks, uh, to kind of back that stuff up. Also these cavefish and rock tails, which will come in handy. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm getting pretty close to having 99 cooking just straight up in my bank. The plan was to stay here in Minifos until 91, and then I think I was going to go do uh, waterfall fishing from 91 to 93. Um, if I just stay here until like 93, maybe 94, I don't remember when you get to start uh, deep sea fishing, um, I'm definitely going to have cooking banked, so uh, I guess that's a good sign. I just realized that I still have this monthly D&D left to do, and monthly reset is tomorrow, and I'm working on fishing, so let's crack open the oyster. Bonus XP star. That is stupidly rare, right? Because that's a clue, a clue thing. Um, I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> Aside from, it's Herblore, baby. Can we really complain about 27k Herblore? Okay, apparently the XP star is only a 1 in 36. Nothing to freak out about. And I just learned that apparently you can boost your fishing level, uh, even just a temporary boost, and it will give you more XP based upon that. So if I ate an Admiral Pie, I would have gotten like an extra 50,000 XP there. <laughs> uh, good to know for when monthly reset rolls around tomorrow, so I can just pick up about 140k fishing. Oh, and I just noticed that my total level, 2372. Well, what I'm actually aiming for, since they're... 28 skills that I'm trying to 99, it's 2772. So I'm just 400 total levels away. J just 400. I do feel a little dumb for just realizing that you can only fill the effigies or the urns at a, at one at a time. You can't do them both at the same time. So I'm going to bank these for now until I go back to mining, because mining, I don't care as much about the XP. It's more about, you know, getting materials for smithing, whereas I do want to get through this fishing. And because Weekly Reset rolled around, there's another Tears of Guthix. Boom, that is level 76. So not only does that unlock the Warforge, when I've, like, never been to the level 70 place yet, um, that also unlocks Malachite Green and Armadillion Yellow Caches. These are very important, because it now means that as an Iron Man, you can do tetra compasses i have one of them in my bank i am going to do it because i want that xp and then tomorrow when reset rolls around i will be going back and i will be boosting a giant oyster to try and get 90 fishing sorted so in terms of the mauritania elite diaries that i am shooting for that is the fishing gold done because i can boost to 96 the herbler gold done because i can boost to 94 the farming is done the only thing left is summoning to 87 how I'm going to sort that out, still not entirely sure. And there's my first Tetra Compass done. I'm just hoping to hit the 1 in 100 Dragon Matic. The 1 in 10,000 would be cool, but I don't expect that's ever going to happen. Alright, um, 
Yeah, a whole bunch of nothing. Let's take the tome and uh, yeah, I'll just, I'll bank the rest on today 66. And here we have a decision to make. I was going to go with the triple charm drops, but I think I'm going with the summoning ingredients this time so I can get the helm add-on. Yes, so a 5% chance to save a charm, which is quite nice. Um, yeah, you know, over the course of a few hundred charms, eventually, you know, this is going to be worth one of those triple charm uh, tickets anyway. Uh, so I thought it would be a good idea to go ahead and get that sorted out. So one thing that I had in mind was doing a bit of a thieving grind up to level 94 to unlock the ability to pickpocket Amlod workers. Um, they provide uh, porters on rare occasion. I thought porters would help out on the archaeology grind that I'm about to go on. I could go pickpocket some, you know, gather some porters. But one other nice thing that they have uh, is charms, actually. As a common drop, they just give you charms. So I think I'm going to go ahead and do that thieving grind. Uh, start, you know, just go pickpocket some Amlod workers every now and again, get some porters, get some charms, see where that maybe takes me. I realize that, you know, all this concern I've had about getting to 87 summoning, that's just so I can get my prayer done a little bit faster so that I can, you know, go work on Vyres on Vampirism cooldown. I don't have to rush that at all. So I'm just going to keep working on, you know, thieving and archaeology as I've sort of laid out. Uh, went ahead and used my banner boost plus two at level 88, uh, which I picked up recently. And can I just say, these wilderness safes are absolutely insane. I mean, I will get through 88 to 90 in probably one hour um, just using the banner boost now for 30 minutes and using it for another 30 minutes after reset. The 10,800 XP drop, like... Come on now, that's insane. <laughs> One uh, semi-time-gated thing that I am going to start working on is more Big Game Hunter. You can see here that the Bagrata Rex and the Semitops are now in hiding, and that is because, uh, well, the Roar of Osseus happened, which gives you a little more XP uh, and better drop rates, though I don't know if that applies to the Matic that I'm hunting for. Uh, in any case, uh, I'm going to try to do those whenever I see the Roar effect up, just for the extra XP. Uh, at least until I get my second Matic. I realize that's a sort of daily I can do while I'm grinding archaeology and thieving up. And there is the big 90 fishing goal that I was going for. Now I can plus 6 boost in order to complete a number of different elite diary tasks. Oh, and that also unlocks my second Ports Adventurer, the Whaler. Oh, and I forgot to record my actual opening of this, but it is total garbage. And there's a cool level 90 thieving for yet another ports adventurer unlocked. This also unlocks the hidden safes uh, in the wilderness uh, for, you know, not having the boost to actually access them. <laughs> Continued working on archaeology and ending off the day with a nice unlock, that being the auto screener. Uh, I do need to get the material storage upgrade at this level, at least, uh, pretty soon. Uh, but then we got the archaeology set to go for, which is pretty nice. Starting day 67 with a little upgrade that I've been working towards. Uh, here we can upgrade the dragon hatchet that is on my tool belt into a crystal hatchet. And then if we go talk to Doc, we can ask him to augment our hatchet. Uh... Yes, he can take this off free of charge, augment the crystal hatchet, boom, and there we have it. That is a nice little upgrade to have for woodcutting slash fire making slash big game hunter training. Wow, that is quite rare, isn't that? Yeah, let's check our kill count. It's like successfully tracked. Uh, yeah, 22. Seven KC Matic. 22 KC, first uncheck. Let's see, is it a male or female? Oh, I need 98 farming to even check it. Okay, well, that's going to be a while. Oh, no, those are only a 1 in 65. So, still pretty lucky. Oh, I didn't mention, uh, actually, yesterday I ended up getting a totem piece, which apparently is a 1 in 50 as well. Uh, it's not the totem of treasure that everyone wants. It's the totem of abyss that is, uh, I don't actually know what it does. <laughs> Oh, would you look at that? I got a dinosaur rib bone. Uh, this is useful for something. Uh, upgrades the player lodge to tier 3. Nice. 
And there it is finally complete all of the followers leveled in temple trekking to get the ghast familiar. Um, can't actually claim that until level 87 summoning, uh, but that would be one of the last big uh, Mauritania elite diary requirements out of the way. Uh, it's it's just getting the summoning level now that's really preventing me from getting that diary done. And our final bowstring count is up to 18,591. That is all going to turn into magic short bows at some point. Uh, it's going to take a while to get those logs from divine locations because um, I think I can only get about 250 a day. Uh, yeah, so it's going to take a while to get through those, but that is the plan that these magic logs I'm collecting to level my woodcutting will eventually level my fletching a little bit and provide some nice invention components. And it's finally that time, the start of three days in a row, back to back to back D&D &D weekly tokens. And turning in these items should get me the thieving level. Yes, it does. So there is 94 thieving grinded out. Didn't I start today at like 90 or something? It's it gotten like three mil today, which is pretty solid. Uh, and that is Amlod Workers Unlocked. So I'm going to start doing these as sort of a daily, um, specifically if it's on Amlod hours, that would be the best time to go. But just in general, if I feel like going and doing some thieving, I'm going to go pickpocket these guys and bank up some, uh, some energies, some charms, and some porters. Now that I'm actually going to be pickpocketing for once, I thought I would go ahead and knock out the hard Ardun task set. I believe that gives a boost to pickpocketing, and I was pretty close to it anyway, so there we have it. Done. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I could just... I'll just throw all this into Herb Lore. Yeah, it's fine. Actually, sorry. Summoning. Summoning is the correct answer here. There we go. And here is the upgrade I've been waiting all day for. Auto Screener V... 1.08 for some reason um yeah very nice this is going to be very very useful for archaeology working on more bgh on day 68 and there we have the totem of treasure top acquired uh two more pieces of this to get and i don't remember how difficult either are but it's nice that we have uh, a third of it already have done what feels like a ton of archaeology today but we are finally to the next sites available, level 81, uh, which is a fair number of unlocks. Don't have any Imkando pieces yet, sadly, uh, but I did manage to make, I think it's seven sets uh, from this that can go into Tetra Compass pieces, which is pretty nice. Knocked out two Zamoraki and two collections, and there we go, material storage upgrade done, and we can start our archaeologist set with the hat, because everyone should start with the hat. And these chronos are coming in really quick, ending off the day by picking up the jacket and the trousers for another 2% bonus XP. On to the next day, we are here working on the Pontifex remains, and it is time to change my note over to display the next day. I don't, I don't do the on-screen overlay thing anymore, but uh, anyway, it's day, yeah. And here we are, finally working on the Crucible Stand Debris. Got my first piece of the Encandomatic, the slice of Encando metal. Uh, so that's that's nice. Um, we're just shy of, of halfway, say maybe about a third of the way, to level 83. Uh, and we're starting to already stack up some of these artifacts, which will go into uh, Red Realm Relics 1 for more Tetra pieces. Oh, and of course, I have now finished the Archaeologist's Outfit in its entirety, which is quite nice. Um, starting to stack up more chronotes. I think I'm just going to save them for eventual unlocks in the Professor tier, or maybe to send out my nerds. Um, I might go ahead and go for this the storage upgrade too, uh, but only if, if stuff really starts to overflow into my bank. Otherwise, I'm just going to save them up to, to really try to grind to 99 as fast as I can, which will be you know the precision upgrade and sending nerds on missions. Okay, another Beastmaster done. Don't think we're doing it back-to-back -back this time, but let's collect loot. All right, I think that is just enough techie uh, to actually push me over 15,000. Uh, I'm not totally sure, uh, but some Hydrix Bolt tips as well, which is pretty nice. I think those are my first Serenic scales, too. Uh, let me see. I am six off. Okay, well. <laughs> uh, oh, oh, well. Oh, well. Uh, I'll get another raid in at some point. All right, that's actually fantastic. That is the fourth piece for my Encando pickaxe. 
I can make that just as soon as I get another dragon pickaxe to drop. Uh, and as soon as I get this last key to go in the door, uh, I'm having to farm these material caches until I eventually see one. But uh, it's nice that I ended up getting uh, all four pieces. I know that some people can go really dry on that. I totally forgot that my next level was going to be a milestone, but there we have it. 2400 total on the meme day. And the one unlock out of the shop that is incredibly valuable, Quick Traps, finally have access to that. I didn't realize <laughs> I had gone about 20 hunts over the mark, but uh, that'll help out quite a bit. Especially since Roar is happening right now, so I'm going to keep doing BGH. There we have it, the second Matic drop. That is quite nice to have. We can go upgrade that to an MK and Matic right away. Uh, though I am first going to do a little bit more BGH and scare off these boys. Oh, and that second Matic was at 71 KC, which is lucky. I mean, come on. Everyone knows at this point, it's not a surprise. And there we have it, our Imkando Matic. And no, we are not adding this to our tool belt. We need to augment it. And the new setup here, Honed 3, Imsold 4. The Imsold 4 is an upgrade. I did use like two Xami components to get it. Uh, and the Honed 3, I think, might actually be a downgrade. Uh, or at least a, a side grade, but just going up to the next tier matic makes a huge difference to begin with. Had to boost my fire making of all things to get these flame gloves, uh, but one, they give a nice set bonus with the ring of fire for bonus XP, uh, and two, they allow me to activate this seed of the char yu tree, uh, which will be uh, used to unlock the inferno, or uh, sorry, always adzi relic uh, for archaeology. Very nice thing about this is that, uh, you know, you don't need super heat form anymore uh, to do the fire making method that I plan on using uh, primarily, which is curly roots. Uh, you can just turn this relic on and then camp it and you're fine. You don't have to worry about recharging your prayer, wasting prayer pots, any of that nonsense. Boom. When wood cutting, you will always burn your cut logs. Very nice. And yesterday I worked very hard. I have eight full sets of green Gabo goodies one to turn in, uh, plus, you know, an extra uh, ninth set just left over uh, for the first that I've already turned in. The first set of these I turned in. Anyway, nine pieces of Tetra Compasses coming out real quick. Yeah, this is going to be a nice feeling contribute. All, oh, I don't have backpack space. Yeah, this is, this is just a nice feeling spamming the contribute all button yeah that's nice and after all of those sets we are left just one piece off of a third tetra compass set uh complete we have one sitting here unpowered already yeah we're we're making some nice progress also we're most of the way to level 85 already uh just from banking those up i knew that i already had the first uh three relics for those sets made uh and banked so I went ahead and just overgrinded at the, um, what is it, Goblin Dorm Debris uh, to make sure that everything lined up appropriately. I also made an extra battle standard, uh, which is important for a, a certain uh, relic or something like that, just, just to have it on hand. Another nice unlock, the Sticky Fingers Relic, which gives us access to the best way of getting easy clues in the game. Managed to get a plus six Herbler boost after getting just one more Herbler level. And that gives me my first three extreme invention potions, which are quite nice, quite nifty. Uh, if I go pop one of these right now, it's going to give me access to all of this research up to level 90. Uh, which should actually give me a few invention levels, which means you can reboost and get even more. So I will get a ton of charge drain and junk chance reduction specifically, which are very nice. Uh, th these are also things that I need for whenever I want to unlock an ancient invention in just a few days. So it's good to go ahead. Uh, good to already have these. Oh, and just for reference, yes, that did mean that my gloom shroom zygomice managed to breed into an archspore zygomite, uh, which actually gives the mycelial living that you need for those potions. Uh, so if I loot, yeah, there's three more. So I could have made, uh, even more potions. That's fine. If I ever have to boost again for these, it, it should be easy enough. Uh, yeah, just a nice unlock overall. Apologies if there is some background noise. There are some, I don't know, fireworks going off or something like that today. But anyway, we have four ancient caskets from our Tetra Compasses to open. Let's see what's in here. 
a whole bunch of nothing but some uh, some uh, binding contracts are quite nice, to be honest. Uh, I'll go ahead and take the tome and then just bank everything else. Let's pop another open. Uh, more more binding contracts, actually. That's, that's pretty solid, I think. And then two more tomes. Uh, very nice. Bank those. Pop another one. Get a tome every time. Uh, Golem Heart. That is nice. Uh, that is for the relic that I'm actually going for. Uh, the level 98 one. I can't remember. Yeah, uh, anyway, there, there are two different things that you need. One's a golem heart and one's something else. Uh, so there we go. And pop the last one open. 50 onyx dust is nice. Complete tome. Yeah. Yeah, that was, uh, that was pretty solid. Now I get to go read these and get like half of level 85 done. And it's time to go to town. So if you look here, nothing left to discover. But if I take a sip of this potion... Plus 17 boost, there's a lot to go. So, yeah, I need to work through these real fast. And I thought since we're here in the Invention Guild, which we did just pick up about 1.85 million EXP in Invention, got up two levels, and we still got plenty more stuff to research uh, with these boosts. Um, thought I'd check my Alchemizer. Yeah, yeah, it's 20 mil right there, baby. Pick that up, add that to the cash stack. That's a 30 mil stack, and we still got a little bit going in there. Also, our auto disassembler can now be boosted and then upgraded into a Mark II auto disassembler, which is just way, way better. Uh, so I will be going for this shortly. I just need to, uh, you know, disassemble some bows. Also, Sacred Clay was at the uh, the Traveling Merchant again, so we now have 225 reward points, and we can purchase the first two pieces of the Fletcher's outfit. Yeah, I'm going with Fletcher's over Artisan simply because it's a money save. Uh, so yeah, two pieces of the Fletcher's outfit, uh, simply because I need to disassemble some bows. All right, if we do a little invention boost again, we can modify this and upgrade it to the Mark II version. Very beautiful. Now we got to rush over and keep doing more research. And we're back at it doing some more archaeology. And that is it, boys. That is it for the video. I know that this one has been a little more delayed than some of the past ones, but we're ending on a nice little milestone. Day number 70, 10 weeks into the series. And I'm hoping that we'll be done in about 20 weeks in total. So we are quickly approaching that. Over 2,400 total now, almost 129 million total XP, which is pretty solid. I'll see y'all in the next one.